Hi everybody. This is a sequel to a prequel. If you remember the previous video, I showed you how to set up collar patterns. Now I'm going to show you how to sew the collar to the neck. And here is a sample. This is what we're going to make. And this is a convertible collar, as you can see. This has all been done by machine, with the exception of the back that hasn't been sewn yet. And what we find when we turn the collar over is that it has a nice clean finish you don't see any of the bottom collar sticking out like you do if you use these dreadful home sewing patterns that aren't set up correctly. There's nothing wrong with these home sewing patterns except they just need some corrections. So you can use them, but you need to know these tricks that I'm showing you. And now we're going to start with the collar. The top collar pattern is also used to cut the stiffening. Sometimes the top collar fabric will be thin and you need to use a different fabric, but with the muslin, we can just use the same fabric, and with many of your fabrics that you would be cutting your blouses from, you can do that as well. If it's a uh, print that might show through, you'd want to use a solid collar instead. All right, so here's the top collar, and here is the stiffening that goes in the collar to give it a little more body. Now, they are cut exactly the same. And as you remember, the bottom collar is cut just a little smaller, so that it will pull under, and like you can see here in the mock-up, it won't show in the finished garment. I have written on the pieces, and we are going to assume that the side that I wrote on is the face side of the garment. The face side, of course, is the side that would show when the garment is finished. So this is the top collar, and there's where I've written on that, so that's the face. So we're going to lay this face to face and the bottom collar is going to be put on top. The reason that I am putting the bottom collar on the top is because when the sewing machine sews, the feed dog pulls the fabric under the presser foot and moves it back. The um, presser foot is just going up and down like this. So the bottom is going to move faster than the top if you don't control it. And since the bottom is just a little larger than the top, the top collar extra ease will just be taken up by the feed dog. Now as you can see I have a little piece of fabric here that I sew in through first and this is called chaining through. In the industry if they were sewing these collars they'd sew at least eight of them at a time and be one collar would go in right after the other. Now this is sewn on a one quarter of an inch. If you remember from the previous video we reduced the seam allowances. And the reason we did that is because, first of all, 5 8 inch seam allowance is a pain in the neck. You sew it on a 5 8 inch seam allowance and then you have to trim it back. Well, you've already cut it out, so you're not cutting it out twice. But if you reduce your seam allowances before you cut your garments, then you sew on the seam allowance that it's been reduced to and it saves you a lot of work. All right, so I'm going to sew forward and now I'm going to show you an old fashioned way of um, back tacking. Just back it up like this, and then you sew forward again, and that locks it in. I'm going to put on some glasses. I see a little better if I put them on. All right, now I've got that started. Notice I'm not using any pins at all. Pins interfere with your sewing. You don't need to pin a lot of stuff. And if you don't pin, you're going to save a lot of time. Putting pins in, taking pins out, putting pins in, taking pins out, pain in the neck. And the next thing is I want to bring the notches together. There's just a little tiny bit of ease in the top collar, which you can see. See that? All right, if I do this and I lay them edge to edge like this, you'll see that the feed dog is going to take up that ease in the top collar and it's going to come out notch over notch by the time we hit the center of the sleeve. Now you're watching me sew just the way they sew in the industry. But they can set their machine so the needle stops down in the fabric when they stop sewing. And many of you have machines at home that will do that too. If you have a fairly new machine and you're not sure, ask the dealer if your machine will do that. And if you can't figure it out, take it back to him so he shows you how to do it. Because 
it's really a lot easier if the needle stops down because it anchors the fabric together already. Now the notch is right over top, the underlying notch in the top collar and the top collar stiffening. So now I want to take it to the end of this seam and again edge to edge right to the point and again you can see the ease in there. I'm making sure that everything is edge to edge so that it will sew up correctly. There we go. Lined it all up just like that. And again, as you can see, no pins. And see how I've rolled it up a little bit? That's how you get the ease out of it. All right, and now we come to the end. And we don't really have to back tack here, but I'm going to do it just to make sure the seam is secure. And now I'm going to take it around. You can see the bottom is a little bit smaller than the top. And don't worry if it's not quite perfectly edge to edge. This isn't. You do the best you can, and it'll come out okay. Now I'm going to turn the bottom collar over, and as you can see, because I've written on it, and I'm making sure that the written side is the face side, I can see what I'm doing. So when you make a mock-up, do this. When you're actually sewing the garment, you've already had the practice, and you'll be okay. I'm going to do raised stitching. And raised stitching is in um, commercial garments all over the place. Uh, I've had students say, Ray stitching, I never heard of that. Look in your garments. The garments are full of it. And this helps to press the garment and keep it in place. There is a crack here, and I'm going to run the inside edge of the right prong of the presser foot right along the crack, and that will give me a 1 16th of an inch seam away from the crack. I am sewing the uh, mock-up on uh, the basting stitch, which is the longest stitch on the sewing machine because if I make a mistake, I can take it out very easily. Now, I wouldn't do that if I were sewing on a garment that I'm planning to wear. This is a mock-up. So when you're doing a mock-up, you want to make it as easy for yourself as possible because you're testing all this out. Once you move to your garment, you're now doing the work that you've already practiced. So if you sew with a smaller stitch, you're much, much more likely not to have to take anything out because you've already had the practice. And you can see I'm pulling it apart. And as you can see, that seam is running 1 16th of an inch away from the edge. Now, it looks just a little messy, but that's because I'm using black thread so you can see what I'm doing. And now I'm going to use the old-fashioned back tack just to finish off this edge because I don't want the seam to come apart. And I'm going to turn it down so it folds right on the crack. Now, in the industry, they set up the pattern so this is already trimmed off a little bit. I didn't do that. Um, you can do it with your patterns, but I didn't do it with this, and a lot of times I don't bother because I'm only making one or two garments from the pattern, and it really doesn't make any difference. So the first thing I want to do is to leave long threads because I don't want to back tack. Back tacking will make a wad at the corner. And we got it edge to edge. And so right down it. When we get to the bottom, I'm then going to use my old-fashioned back tack to tighten up the threads to make sure it doesn't come undone. Oops. There we go. And then I'm going to pull it out to leave long threads. I'm going to pull it out a little and stitch again. Some people clip their threads when they're done. Other people clip as they go. It depends on what you want to do. In the industry, the machines clip the threads now. And some of the most modern home sewing machines do that as well. This thing's been running since 1941. Still going strong. I'm going to get out my big shears because I use them even to cut buttonholes open. And I'm going to trim back on the corner. Whoops, there we go. And I'm going to turn it. I find that stitch rippers are good for turning collar points and so are scissor points and the other one of course too. Just to make it easier I'm going to stay stitch the top collar and its stiffening together on the neck because that's going to make it easier when I'm sewing the collar to the blouse. And we'll just run this down here. Now this is going to be sewn on a quarter of an inch to the garment, so I want the stay stitching to be 
an eighth of an inch. And stay stitching is something that does exactly what it says. It makes something stay in place. Okay. Now here you can see it says stiffening, but that's inside the garment. So that's not going to show when this collar is sewn. Okay, I'm making this all go edge to edge. And that's going to make it easier when I sew this to the neck. There are some steps that you say, well, why are you doing it? It just takes more time. But in the end, it saves time. And that's what this does. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to sew the inner facing to the facing. Here's the facing. You can see it in the garment. This is the facing you actually see. And the inner facing is underneath. So I'm going to sew this seam here first. It's important to understand what you're doing as you're sewing. Where is it going and why are you doing this? Here are the patterns. You always want to take the patterns to the sewing machine with your cut pieces because you can look at the patterns and it can explain to you what you are doing. Most of you that are watching this video are women and we are often interrupted with family affairs. We are miss sewing, we are busy, and we've got to stop. And several days later, we have to go back to where we were. We may forget where we were, but if we have all this organized, we don't waste time trying to figure it all out again. This says facing, this says inner facing, and here is the front of the garment. So I'm going to put these patterns aside, and I'm going to lay this like this. So I'm going to sew it together. Now, to make sure that we don't wind up with two rights or two lefts, I'm going to lay this side this way, and I'm going to lay this like this. Now I know I have a left and I have a right, and that way I won't make the mistake of sewing two rights or two lefts. These are mock-ups, and I probably cut this just a little bit longer. What matters is that it's the notch is over the notch. That's what matters, not that this is edge to edge at the bottom. Again, I'm going to do my old-fashioned back tack business here. And this is also on one quarter of an inch. And if you're not sure about that, you go back and you look at your patterns. And you can see that here it says one quarter of an inch. There's my notes. And it says one quarter at the neck as well. So that I know exactly what seam allowance I should be sewing this on. And that's very, very important that you get that right. Here's another notch, notch to notch. I'm making sure notch to notch because the um, inner facing is just a little smaller than the facing. So it will pull back the same as the bottom collar does. Now, this pattern had no inner facing pattern, so I drafted one. Home sewing patterns are often missing very important pieces. So it's important to know how to make them and how to go about uh, drafting them so that when you go to sew the garment, you have the pieces you need. I'm going to take the next one. I'm going to sew this right after it. And you can see here, do you see the difference? So I know I've got a left and I've got a right. The next thing I'm going to do is, once you've sewn up, you can sew down on the same seam and it's all right. And this time, the left presser foot is running along the crack so that I get the raised stitch in there. I'm pulling it apart with my fingers. Your fingers and hands act like irons. They have moisture, pressure, and just like an iron does. All right, I'm going to go up on this one. I don't think I need to go down on that one. And you can do this pretty quickly. You know, you're looking at this and you might say, well, she's a professional, she can do it. I don't think I can. Nonsense. You can do this. I'll tell you that right now. I've taught too many students not to know that you can do this. And the next thing we want to do is we want to sew it back. We're going to sew the shoulder seam back. I'll show you what we're doing here. The shoulder seam is going to be sewn closed so that it will then lie against the shoulder seam in the garment. We want it edge to edge, and there's a little bit of ease in the top piece. So we see that, and we know that, but we're going to make it go under the machine the way we want it to go. Now I've got a gauge here, and this is one quarter, three eighths, one half. And I'm going to just pull the bottom out, 
and let the top ease in and the machine will do it. Can you believe that? Simple as that. And now I need to do the other one as well. This one's a little easier because the extra fullness is on the bottom and the feed dog will take it up. And there we go. And this one came up pretty close. It's a little tiny bit short, but that's not enough to worry about. All right, now turn this right side out like this. Now I'm taking the back piece. Here's the back. And of course, this is going to be considered the face of the garment. And we're going to lay this. We're going to sew the shoulder seam. It looks like it's it's not doesn't fit right, but it does because it's a half an inch to half an inch. So see when I bring it so that it's from a half an inch here to half an inch here, it sews. And there is just a little bit more in the back than there is in the front. It's hard to see it, but it is. Hmm. This notch isn't coming out right. Something's wrong with this notch. The sample makers aren't there just to sew garments together. They are there to check the pattern maker's work to make sure the garment really does sew under the sewing machine and that the patterns are actually going to work in the factory, that, that, that this is all going to sew together correctly. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, okay, what's the matter here? Why doesn't this notch line up? And I'm seeing that the notch is off a little bit. Okay, I'm going to put a half an inch seam allowance in here. And the pattern is edge to edge, the notches are not. See this? V-notch it. Okay, so that's the one we're going to use. And I'm putting an arrow to this and an arrow to this, so we know that. And so it's the front that needs the notch changed. The back notch can stay the way it is. This is very important. These notches really matter. I mean, there are many home sewers think, well, they cut slits in their, in their garments. That's not really what we're doing. We're cutting just a little notch so that you know where to sew it. It eliminates the pinning, it does not harm the garment in any way whatsoever. The one problem with notching is that if you zigzag over the seam allowances, the notches will disappear. So if you prep the seams before you sew them, you won't be able to see the notches. But my opinion, it's always better to sew the seam and then finish the seam allowance. That's what I always do, even though in the industry they prep and then they sew. Of course, they're prepping with overlocks. And with overlocks, you can still see the notches. There's a number of different ways to use the notch, but a uh, V-notch, also indicates that the correct notch is the V-notch, not the notch that's sitting next to it. And that's what I'm doing with this. So, and I'm lining up the notch. Now these edges aren't gonna meet correctly because the actual seam gauge is one half down here. So this isn't going to look right, but it will when I sew the second seam of the French seam. All right, so that's one. I'll do the other one. Let's see, where's the other one, where'd it go? Here we go. Now I'm sewing out from the neck, and the reason I am is because I'm sewing with the grain of the fabric. The yarns are pointing this way, so that's the way you want to sew. You want to sew in the direction of the fray. You see there's a V-notch over top of the little notch in the back, and I'm going to, again, sew this on a quarter of an inch seam allowance, and of course the edges don't meet because they will at the half inch. Now remember, your hands have moisture and pressure and heat, same as an iron. So you don't need to run to the iron every two seconds to press. Now there are some fabrics where you may need to do that. But by and large, you just don't need to do all that. All right, as you can see, this looks pressed now. And I just did this with my fingers. All right, and now I'm going to sew in another quarter of an inch. And as you can see, it's going to line right up edge to edge there so that we get it. and I can see the seam allowance inside. So I want to sew, so it's just beyond the edge of the seam allowances inside. And now we'll do the other side. There's the front, there's the back, and it's all ready to have the collar sewn to the neck.
we have a little section here that extends beyond the center front. See this notch is center front, and this little section here needs to be sewn. See this little extension? That's where the collar meets. It meets right at center front. And then there's this little bit of lappage that goes underneath on either side. So this top of the lappage has to be sewn, and that's a delicate operation. But thanks to the notches, we know where we need to sew. Here's the V-notch at the fold. In this case, I put a V-notch at the fold rather than at center front. And I need to sew from this edge right to here on one quarter of an inch, just to the notch. We want it all to be edge to edge so it comes out perfectly. It's important when we do this to leave long threads because this is not a place where you want to back tack. It would cause a wad. You want to be able to pull the threads through and tie them. And you want to be able to do it at the beginning and the end of this very short seam. So first I'm going to put the needle down to make sure it's in position. Now remember, I'm sewing on the longest stitch on the sewing machine. When you're doing this in a blouse, you would want to use a much smaller stitch. I don't think you need to make it any smaller than the other stitches that you're using to sew the blouse, but it wouldn't be the longest stitch on the sewing machine. The little stitch rippers is so convenient. Pull this up and tie the threads. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Tying this with a real tight knot to make sure it stays in place. And we're turning it. There. And then here at the top, we want to lay the facing right against the shoulder seam like this. And that can be hand sewn later after the collar is set to the uh, neck edge. We've got three plies of fabric here and a notch. We make sure these notches are notch to notch. And I'm going to put a pin there too. So that's the way it's going to be, like that. And that's set up. It just seems as if the collar should be sewn the exact opposite way than it does need to be sewn. So I'm going to show you the tricks with this. All right, this is the face of the garment. And here we have the top collar. Now what we want when we're done with sewing this is that the collar will turn back like this on the garment, right? So this means that you sew the top collar to the inside of the garment so that it will flip back. It seems as if it should be the opposite way, and I've done it the opposite way and had to take it off. So I'm making a special point of showing you how to do this so that it comes out correctly. Here again is a place where you want to use pins. The seam comes right to that clipped edge there of the neckline. I have found the smart thing to do is to sew this before I sew around the uh, collar and the neck because this is right where it's going to go wrong. If you have this fixed ahead of time, it can save you a lot of trouble. And that's, of course, on a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And I'm going to do the same thing with the other side. Make sure it's right there, right at that crack of the seam. If there's any place where this is going to go wrong, it's right at that point. And I'm going to move it up just a little tighter. I then do a little hand stitching after I put the collar on to tighten it up. And that holds it because that is where the collar is very vulnerable. All right, so now this is all sewn. It's better to have the side that curves and it's more trouble to sew on the top. And um, so the collar is down to the feet and that's gonna make it easier to sew this together. The stay stitching that I previously did to hold the 
top collar and it's stiffening together is making a big difference too. It's making it easier to control all this. The collar is the straighter of the two pieces. So that's why it's on the bottom. I'm just checking. Okay, so here it is. We're going to fold this together and just check the work. Check everything you do as you sew. Because if you've made a mistake, you want to find out as soon as possible. There we go. So we know we've got that right. Now the bottom collar still has to be sewn. And now I'm going to turn this back on itself like this. And the first thing I'm going to do is just sew this section right here to make sure that's flat. There. That'll hold it. See, I'm folding it back so that the facing is inside. I'm turning it back just a little bit so I can make sure that this will be nice and flat inside the garment. In the industry, what counts is machine skills. Hand skills aren't that difficult to learn. It's the machine skills that are tricky. And the more skilled on the machine an operator is, the more money she makes. Okay, so now that's in pretty good there. Now sometimes I put like a little hand stitching in here, but this one is caught really good. All right, now the next thing is to get this sewn to this. And the trick is to turn this back on itself And this time, I'm going to sew with the bottom collar down to the feet. And I'm lining up the notches so I know I have everything flat and in place. And this is the notch that's at the shoulder seam. So that goes there. That's what these notches are all about. And everything must be edge to edge. Hand sewing takes time. Just because a garment is full of hand sewing doesn't mean it's well made. You do hand sewing where you have to. This of course has pins in it because I haven't sewn this together yet. Okay, and we'll do the same on the other side. And again, it's the same thing, notch to notch. Make sure the notches are lined up. If the notches are lined up and you've done your pattern work correctly, it works. It would seem as if I'm sewing blind, but it's the notches that enable me to do this. And the pattern work, of course. I spend more time on patterns than I spend sewing. I would say, off the top of my head, that when I make a garment, two-thirds of my time is spent on pattern work and one-third on sewing. When I sit down to the machine to sew, I'm not checking to see whether or not it fits. I already know it fits. I'm not checking to see whether or not this works or that works or the other work. I already know because I set up the patterns. And if I have any question about something, I do what I'm doing here. I make a mock-up and check because once I'm working with the fashion fabrics, I want everything to go as smoothly and as quickly as possible. Yeah. And there we are. And what's still left is a little hand sewing. We need to turn this underneath. It, there's a limit to how much you can do on the machine. The industry would probably just sew a seam through there but if it's inexpensive clothes. But I wouldn't do that. I would hand stitch it because it only takes me a few minutes. They can't very well do that for a thousand garments. I'll turn around so it's correct. And there we go, ladies. And that is how you do it. See you next time. Hang in there. Keep trying this stuff. You can do it. I know all about it. I've taught many students, and I couldn't believe how well they did. I've had plenty of students wind up with great jobs in the industry. Plenty of students wound up with great clothes for themselves. It's been a lot of fun. It continues to be a lot of fun. I enjoy talking with you. I enjoy showing you this.
and I hope you keep watching because there's more coming just for you. Bye-bye.